You know, I've said before, I think Luke is great. He's going to end up one of the top five scorers in league history, but I don't see him as a face of the league guy, and I don't see him as a guy holding trophy after trophy after trophy. He may be like, Dirk, go get one. But again, number one usage rate player in the league. What does that mean? He's got the ball in his hands more than any player of the league. And once again, like a James Harden, you get to the postseason when you're the number one usage rate guy, you're hobbled and you run out of gas. Look at his three-point shooting. He's lost his legs. Giannis, number two usage rate guy, got hurt. SGA, number three usage rate guy. His numbers are down from the uh, regular season. These usage rate guys that always have the ball in their hands, it can work for short runs, like Jalen Brunson's doing it now in the playoffs, but 82 games, you get worn down. All those minutes, all that dominance, all those possessions. And again, Lucas' three-point shootings got into the tank. Um, he's actually now playing defense as well. So he's hobbled. He comes in banged up, worn down, hobbled. Jason Kidd's playing him through all this, and he's not the same player. So it's one of the things about maybe life and basketball. Pick your spots. You know, NFL, you got one game a week. If you're an offensive player, you got 55 plays. Same in hockey. You're on the line. It's 45 seconds. You play mad, crazy, intense. But in basketball, you got to pick your spots. LeBron's 39, he picks his spots. He takes enough games off, he picks his spots. He didn't take a ton of games off, didn't want to play back-to-backs, picks his spots in games. He's 39 and still robust. James Harden, usage rate guy, late-night guy, 34 and looks old. MJ was great at picking his spots. And I, and I think this is what's going to happen to Dallas is that, A, Luka, when he always has the ball in his hands, it's going to be hard to play with. Now, you could say, well, Kyrie, Colin, this thing's working. Now... Half the season, yeah. Would you be surprised if it blew up tomorrow or blew up next week or blew up at the trade deadline? The Kyrie move is a desperation move to get somebody that could play with him after they gave Jalen Brunson away and he became a star in New York. This is not an anti luca thing. It's a, when you get these players, the James Harden, uh, the Lucas uh, are two that jump out to me. Uh, Giannis always had ball dominant, both ends asking a lot. Now they're asking Luca to play defense. He's worn down. He has lost his legs. Now, Luke is always going to be able to score. He can go out tomorrow in the next game and score 45 points. But this is what I always felt Luca was. He was going to end up a top five NBA score, but his career would look more like Harden, better than Harden, but more like Harden than it would MJ. And so, again, the Kyrie move works now, but nobody in the league wanted him except the Mavericks. And never, never forget this. In the NFL, four of the last six teams – where the quarterback led the league in passing, in a passing league, either didn't make the playoffs or didn't win a single playoff game. Just like the NBA, it's about scoring. It's about having a star. Yes, Lucas scores and he's a star, but there's a way to do it. There is balance, and the Mavericks feel lopsided. Luka, his teams are lopsided. You have to get defensive players before this year to protect his defensive liabilities. Now he is playing defense, but because of his usage rate and playing defense and the minutes, he's a broken down player. He's still great, but he doesn't quite look the same. So again, those NFL teams, four of the last six were the quarterbacks led the league in passing. They don't make the playoffs or if they do, they don't win a game. So it's the construction of the team. You fall in, everybody talks, you know, lazy, lazy media people, MVP talk, MVP talk. Nobody cares about that. Win the games. Nobody cares about MVP stuff. I mean, in the NBA, the MVP is your favorite story. Westbrook wins it. Embiid wins it. You know, it feels like the right thing to do. Nobody wants Jokic to win it three or four or five times in a row because his game's kind of ugly. Whatever it is, I feel like, you know, this is semi-predictable with Luka. Big score, high usage rate. When they ask him now to play real defense, you're just asking too much of a guy. He's broken down. Legs are kind of shot. Um, again, he could drop 30 in the next playoff game, but he doesn't quite feel the same. He looks a little gassed. Now, the opposite star player in this league of Luka is Jason Tatum, who I do think will end up winning titles, which I would prefer over just a guy who scores a bunch of points. But sometimes you wish Jason Tatum was more aggressive, took the game over more often. So he was only the third leading scorer for the Celtics last night, and he's only 
the third leading scorer for the Celtics in the playoffs, despite the fact he's their best player. So I would prefer, prefer unselfish players. First of all, they're easier to play with. All Jason Tatum teams tend to be good and have good chemistry. So that's not the case with Luka. He couldn't get along with Brunson. The Kyrie thing works now, but it could blow up. So I prefer the Tatum version of this NBA star. He just plays well with everybody. I wish sometimes, though, the only question is, there is with Tatum, I feel like, you know, he's sleepwalking through Miami. He's kind of sleepwalking through Cleveland. And when he has to go toe-to-toe with an Ant or a Luka or an SGA or a Jalen Brunson, that could happen very soon. Can you give me a 44-point night if Jalen Brunson is – or if Jalen Brown is off and Porzingis doesn't play and I need Tatum against the Knicks, I need him to score 46 points. Can he give me that? Can he flip the switch? He may be able to do that. But it's interesting to watch Luka, who I think has a very predictable postseason again. Now when you finally ask him to play defense, and he does, with his usage rate, it's just too much. He feels – these guys are human beings, right? you got to pick your spots. With Tatum, I actually prefer that kind of star, but it leaves me feeling like I'm, I, I want more. 18 points, third leading scorer in the playoffs. Can you give me a little next level? And can he flip that when he faces maybe an ant or when he faces a Jokic or whoever probably won't be Jokic? Can he do that? So it's interesting because Tatum had this relationship with Kobe Bryant and Kobe Bryant could be a very selfish player, but Kobe Bryant knew when to be unselfish. That's why he ended up with five rings. He knew there were times to get it to Shaq. Kobe knew there were times, take the foot off the pedal, get it to Gasol. Kobe loved playing with bigs. And so with Tatum, I'm really interested to see how this ends. They're going to win the East. The Knicks will probably push them five or six. I think they're going to win the East. They should win the East. And Tatum is easy to play with. But it's interesting to watch Luka with a high usage rate being broken down. And with Tatum, I get no holes in his game. Before this year, Luka had a lot of holes, mostly defense. Luka, uh, with Tatum, he's a good defender. He's a good teammate, can hit a jumper, can drive score at the rim, can hit a three. Not a lot of holes in his game. Again, I just feel like sometimes grab it. You know, now you'd say Colin, there's not the perfect player. That's right. I mean, Tatum is graceful. He's got a refined game. It's very complete. But it's interesting to watch last night. The heavy ball usage rate guy that you got to cover for on defense historically, who is harder to play with, looks gassed. Tatum, you wish he was a bit more selfish. Say what you want, but it's like he's conserving energy. Which one's going to end better? My guess is the Tatum. So am I being overly critical of Jason Tatum for wanting him to be more? And maybe he won't have to be. But I do feel like there'll be a moment in that Knicks series because they play such great defense that Jalen Brown will be held in check. He'll be off. Porzingis may not be healthy. And that's why a potential Celtics-Knicks series is so interesting to me because I think you're going to need a 46-point game from him, maybe on the road in New York. And I'm not sure. I, I want to see if he can flip that switch. When I'm watching Jason Tatum, J-Mac, I really feel like this. I feel like he knows I can conserve energy against Miami. I can conserve energy against Cleveland. So it may be a very smart play on his point, but having your best player as your third leading scorer as you go into your second series is different in the history of the league. That's just not the way it usually works. And my take is he's kind of just sitting back and waiting for the moment. And that's why I think the New York-Boston series could be great. I would prefer the Tatum star over the Lucas star. Easier to play with, always going to have better chemistry, not a lopsided team. You don't have to protect him on the defensive end. But it's, but I still do feel with Tatum sometimes, I need 46 tonight. And I, I think against the, I don't think he's going to need that against Cleveland. I, they're going to fly through Cleveland. But the Knicks series potentially, if they beat Indiana, I think, you know, we kind of think maybe they will. I don't know if you do. But that's one one that, were, to me, is the Best potential playoff series left, including the finals. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.